From the Cube Studios in Palo Alto and Boston, connecting with thought leaders all around the world, this is a Cube Conversation. Hello everyone and welcome to this week's Wikibon Cube Insights powered by ETR. In this breaking analysis, we're changing the format a little bit. We're going right to the new data from ETR. You might recall in last week, uh, ETR received survey results from over a thousand CIOs and IT practitioners. And they made a call at that time, which said that actually surprisingly, a large number of respondents, about 40% said they didn't expect a change in their 2020 IT spending. At the same time, about 20% of the survey said they're going to spend more, largely related to work from home infrastructure. ETR was really the first to report on this. And it wasn't just collaboration tools like Zoom and video conferencing. It was infrastructure around that, security, network bandwidth, and other types of infrastructure to support work from home like desktop virtualization. So ETR made the call at that time that it looked like budgets were going to be flat for 2020. Now you also might recall consensus estimates for 2020 came into the year at about 4%, slightly ahead of GDP. Obviously that's all has changed. Last week ETR took the forecast down and we're going to update you today we're now gone slightly negative. And with me to talk about that again is Sarga Kadakia, who's the Director of Research at ETR. Sarga, great to see you again. Thank you for coming on. Thanks for having me again, Dave. I really appreciate it. So let's get right into it. I mean, if you, if you look at the time series chart that we showed last week, you can see how sentiment changed over time. That, that blue line was basically people who responded to the survey starting at 311. Now you've updated that, that forecast really of uh, uh, tracking after the COVID-19 really kicked in. Can you explain what we're seeing here in this chart? Yeah, no problem. So the last time we spoke, we were around an N or sample size of about a thousand. Uh, and we were right around that 0% growth rate. One of the unique things that we've done is we've left this survey open. And so what that allows us to do is really track uh, the impact on annual IT growth essentially daily. And so as things have progressed, as you look at that blue line, you can really see the growth rate has continued to trend downwards. And as of just a day or two ago, we're now below zero. And so I think because of what's occurring right now, you know, the, the overall current climate continues to slightly deteriorate. You're seeing that uh, in a lot of the CIO's responses. Yeah, so if you bring that slide back up, Andrew, I want to just sort of stay on this for a second. What I really like about what you guys are doing is you're essentially bringing event analysis in this. So if you see that blue line, you see on 313, a national emergency was declared. And that's really when the blue line started to decline. What ETR has done is kind of reset that, reset the data since 313, because it's now a more accurate reflection of what's actually happening, happening in the market. Notice in the upper right, it says the US approved, the Senate last night approved uh, a stimulus package, actually they're calling it an aid package. It's really not a stimulus package, right? It's an aid package that they're injecting to help a number mm -hmm. of, uh, out of out of work workers, actually it sounds like existing workers and small businesses and even large businesses like Boeing. Boeing was up significantly yesterday, powering the Dow um, and potentially airlines. So it's, you can see ETR is going to continue to monitor the impact and roll this out. Really ETR is the only company that I know of anyway, that can track this stuff on a, on a daily basis. So Saga, that event analysis is, is really key and you're going to be watching the impact of this stimulus slash, slash aid package. Yeah, so here's what we're doing on that chart. So if you look at that yellow line again, uh, effectively what you're seeing is if we remove the first, I think six or 700 respondents that took the survey and start tracking how budgets are changing as of 313, right? That's when the US declared uh, a national emergency. We can recalculate the growth rate and we can see it's around it's almost negative one and a half. And so the beauty of doing this, you know, really polling daily is it allows us to be just as dynamic as a lot of these organizations are, right? I think one of the things we talked about uh, the last time was some of these budget changes are going to be temporary and organizations are figuring out what they're doing day by day. And a lot of that is dictated uh, based on government actions. And so Uniquely here, what we're able to do is kind of give people a range and also say, based on these events, this is how things are changing. And so I think we think the first biggest event was on 313, uh, where uh, the US effectively declared a national emergency over COVID-19. And now what we're going to start tracking between today and over the weekend and Monday is 
are people getting more positive? Is there no change or is there further deterioration because of this aid package uh, that got passed this morning? Now, I want to share with our audience. So I've been down to ETR's uh, headquarters in New York. It's, it's staffed with a number of data scientists and statistical mm -hmm. experts. The ends here are well over a thousand. I think we're, we're over 1100 now. Uh, is that correct? What is the end that we're at today? That's right. Yeah, we're, we're pushing right over 1200 and we're going to expect a few more hundred respondents. And so uh, the, the good thing is it's, it's balanced, which is important, right? All these events that are occurring, we want to make sure that we have at least a few hundred more CIOs and IT executives answering. And so uh, every week as we kind of continue to do some of these breaking analyses, there are going to be a few more hundred CIOs and we'll really be able to zero in or, or hone in on what they're saying. And so the, 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 the growth rate or on, on the IT side, it's going to continue to fluctuate. It's going to continue to be dynamic uh, over the next few weeks. But right now versus, you know, versus just last week ago, we are in negative territory now. Now, I, I want to also explain, I mean, the end is important, uh, but in mm -hmm. and of itself, it's not the be all end all. What's important about the end, the larger it is, the more cuts you can make. And I, and I want to share, you guys have been doing this for the better part of a decade. And so you have firm level data and so, and you've got indicators and markers that you've tracked over the years. So for example, one of the things that ETR tracks is giant public and private, GPP, we, mm -hmm. we call it. And, and so, you, and, that, and that's for example, I'm not saying that, that Mars is one of the companies, but Mars is a huge private company, UPS mm -hmm. before they went public, huge private company. So ETR tracks firm level data, they of course anonymize that, but they can see markers and trackers and trends and, and, and probably have, I don't know, dozens of those types of segments. So the bigger the end is, the more, uh, the, the higher the end within those buckets and the better the confidence, confidence interval. So, and you guys are experts at really digging into that and trying to understand and read the tea leaves. That's right. The, the key to this survey is it's not anonymous. We know who is taking the survey. Now, to your point, we do anonymize and aggregate it when we display those results. But one of the unique capabilities is we're able to see all of these trend lines, uh, the entire drill down survey that we did on COVID-19 through the lenses of, of different verticals. So we can take a look at industrials, materials, manufacturing, healthcare, pharma, airlines, delivery services, health, you know, and, and all these other uh, verticals and get a feel for which ones are deteriorating the most, which ones uh, look stable. And, you know, we talked about it last week and it continues to remain true this week. And again, the ends have gone up on all these verticals on the supply chain side, industrials, materials, manufacturing, healthcare, pharma, they continue and they also anticipate uh, to, to, to see these things in the next few months, broken supply chains. And then on the demand side, it's really retail, consumer, airlines, delivery services. Uh, that's, that's coming down quite substantially. And I think you know, based on what United and some of these other airlines have done just the last few days in terms of cutting capacity, uh, that's just a reflection of, you know, of, of, of what we're seeing. So let's dig into the data a little bit more, Andrew, yeah. if you bring up the next chart. So last week, where about 40% uh, uh, actually, exactly 40% were that gray line that said CIOs and IT practitioners said no change to their IT budget, mm -hmm. the green, the green was actually at about 20, 21%, so it's slightly up now at 22%. And you can see, you know, most of the, the green is in that one to 10% to range. And you can see in the left-hand side, it, it's, it, it's obviously changing. So now we're at 37% in the gray line, slightly up in the green, and a little bit more down in, in the red. So take us through what's changed, Sagar. Yeah, so to reiterate what we were talking about last week, and then I'll kind of talk about some of the changes, is you know, I think the market and a lot of our clients, right? They were expecting uh, the, the growth rate to be more negative, right? Last week when we, uh, when we talked about 0%, the reason that you know, it, it wasn't more negative is because we saw all these organizations accelerating spend because they had to keep employees uh, productive, right? They, they don't want a catastrophe in productivity. And so you saw this, this acceleration, as you mentioned uh, earlier in the interview, around work from home tools, right? Collaboration tools, uh, increasing bandwidth on the VPN networking side, laptops, uh, MDM, so forth and so on. And so that continues to hold true today. Again, you know, if we use the same example that we talked about last week, Fortune 100, Fortune 500 organizations, they have 40, 50, 60,000 employees or more working from home you have to be able to support these individuals. And that's why we're actually seeing some organizations accelerate spend 
and the majority of organizations, even though they are uh, declining spend, some of that is still being offset by having to spend more on the, what we're calling kind of this work from home infrastructure. But I will say this, you are seeing more organizations versus last week, which is why the growth rate has come down, moving more and more towards the negative bucket. So uh, again, there is some offset there, but the offset we talked about last week, work from home infrastructure is not a one for one when it comes to taking down your IT budget. And that continues to hold true. Right, so let's talk a little bit about some of the industries, uh, retail, mm -hmm. airlines, industrials, yep. you know, pharma, healthcare. What are you seeing in terms of the industry impact, particularly as it relates to supply chains, but other industry data that you squinted through? Yeah, I think the biggest takeaway is that uh, healthcare, pharma, industrial materials, you know, manufacturing organizations, they've indicated the highest levels of broken supply chains today. And they think in three months from now, it's actually going to get worse. And so uh, we spoke about this last time. I don't think this is going to be a V-shaped recovery from the standpoint of things are going to get better in the next few weeks or the next month or two. Uh, CIOs are indicating that they expect conditions to worsen uh, over the next three months on the supply chain side. And in even demand, uh, you know, uh, the ones that are getting hit the hardest on the retail consumer side, airlines, delivery services, they are again indicating that they anticipate demand to be worse three months from now. And so, you know, the goal is to continue serving and polling these individuals over the next few weeks and months and to see if we can get a better timeline as we get into 2H. But uh, for the next few months, uh, conditions look like they're going to get worse. Yeah, I want to highlight some of the industries and just make some comments here. Retail, you guys called out retail airlines, delivery services, industrials, materials, manufacturing, pharma, and healthcare mm -hmm. as some of the, the highest impact. I'll just make yeah. a few comments here. I mean, I think retail really, this accelerates the whole digital transformation. We already saw this starting, and I think you'll see further consolidation and some permanence in the way in which companies are, mm -hmm. are, 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 are pivoting to digital. Mm -hmm. Obviously the big guys like Walmart and, and the like are competing very effectively with, with Amazon, but you know, there's going to be some more consolidation there. I would say potentially the same thing in airlines. They're really are closely watching what the government is going to do, but you know, do we need this, this many airlines? Do we need all this capacity? Maybe yes, maybe no. So we're watching that. And of course, healthcare right now, as I said last week in the breaking analysis, they're just too distracted right now to buy anything. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're mm -hmm. overwhelmed. Now, of course, pharma, you know, they, they're manufacturing, so they've got disruptions in supply chain and obviously the business, but there could be an upside down the road as COVID-19 you know, vaccines come to the market. Yeah, I, uh, on the upside, I think you kind of hit it you know, right on the nail. Um, when you get these type of events that occur, sometimes it speeds up digital transformation. You know, one of the things the, the team and I have been talking about internally is uh, this is not your father's keep the lights on strategy, so to speak. Uh, organizations are very focused on maintaining productivity versus uh, significantly cutting costs. So what does that mean? You know, maybe three to five years ago, um, if, if this had occurred, you would have seen a lot of infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, right? So a lot of these cloud providers, uh, you would have seen those projects decline as, as organizations spent more on on-prem. And we're not seeing that. We're seeing continued elevated budgets on the cloud side. And, and Micron just reported this morning and again cited strong demand on the cloud and data center side. So that just goes to show that organizations are trying to maintain productivity. They want to continue these IT roadmaps and they're going to cut budgets where they can, but it's not going to be uh, on, on the cloud side. You know, that's a really important point. This is not post uh, Y2K, not mm -hmm. 2008, 2007, 2008, 2009. And because we've you know, it's a ten, been a 10 year bull market, companies are doing pretty well. Balance sheets are generally strong. And, and so, they, they somewhat can weather, and it was used to stronger companies can, can weather this, so they're not focused right now anyway on cut, 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 as it was in the last two downturns. Um, let's go into some of the, the vendor data mm -hmm. uh, and some of the sector data, Andrew, if you'd bring up the next chart. So what we're showing here is really comparing the, the blue is the January survey to the current survey in the yellow, and you're seeing some of the sectors that are upticking. So, You've identified mobile device management, uh, big data and, and cloud, some of the productivity, you know, you mentioned DocuSign, Adobe, Zoom, Citrix, even VMware with uh, desktop virtualization. We've talked about security. You've got marketing and LinkedIn, my LinkedIn inbound is going through the roof as people are you know, <laughs> probably signing up for a LinkedIn you know, premium. Um, 
So let's talk about this a little bit, what you're seeing, sort of help us interpret this data. Yeah, sure. So one of the things that everybody wants to know is, okay, so work from home infrastructure is getting more spend. Who are the vendors that are benefiting the most? And so one of the unique things that we can do is because we're kind of collecting all the DNA, right, from a a tech stack side uh, from these organizations, we can overlap how they're spending on these vendors and also uh, with the data that they provide in terms of whether they are increasing or decelerating their IT budgets because of COVID-19. So what you're looking at here is we isolated to all of those organizations and customers, right, that indicated that they're increasing their budgets because of COVID-19, right, because of the work from home infrastructure. And what we're doing is we're then isolating to vendors that are getting the most upticks in spend. And so this actually really nicely aligns with a lot of the themes that we were talking about, collaboration tools. Uh, you see VM there, VMware there all right, on the virtualization side, uh, MDM with Microsoft, and you're seeing a lot of other vendors uh, with Citrix and Zoom and Adobe. These are the ones that we think are going to benefit from this kind of work from home infrastructure movement. And again, it's, it's all very, it's not just the qualitative and the commentary. This is all analytics. We really went in and analyzed every single one of these organizations that were increasing their budgets and tried to pinpoint using using different data analysis techniques and to see which vendors were really uh, getting the the majority or the largest you know uh, pie of that spend. Yeah. Now uh, we had Sanjay Poonin, who's the COO of VMware, on yesterday, and he was very sensitive to not trying mm-hmm. to appear as you know, ambulance chasing, because obviously mm-hmm. they do, you know, de- desktop, you know, virtualization and you know, VDI, big workload. Uh, mm-hmm. At the same time, I think he was also being cautious because there's probably portions of their business that are going to get hit. Michael right. Dell, similarly, similarly, I think he was quoted in CRN as saying, hey, our, we're seeing a, a momentum in our laptop uh, business and our, you know, mobile business. You know, but, but as you guys pointed out, the flip side of that is their on-prem business is probably going to suffer somewhat. So it's a, it, it kind of like the work from home is a, a partial offset, but it's not a total offset. You're seeing that with a lot of these companies. Obviously, Microsoft, AWS, a lot of the cloud companies are very well positioned. How mm-hmm. about some of the guys that are going to get impacted? Obviously, as I said, the, the on-prem folks, you guys talked about you know, earlier, it's not your father's keep, keep your lights on strategy, okay, but this, you asked the question, is this a, pre, a reprieve for the legacy guys? Not quite was your conclusion. What did you mean by that? Yeah, I think a lot of times when you have these type of events, um, the clients, you know, a lot of the market think, okay, uh, some of the legacy vendors are going to do well because you know we're in tumultuous times and we don't want to keep on this kind of next generation strategy, but we're not seeing that. And, and to the point that you highlighted earlier, um, there are, even though these companies like Dell, like Cisco, where they're seeing some products accelerate, there are products to your point that are not doing as well, right? The desktops, right? as an example for Dell or the storage. Um, and so on the negative side or the legacy side where we're just not seeing any traction, uh, the IBMs, the Oracle on-prem, right? Symantec, right? Which got acquired by, by Broadcom, uh, Checkpoint, MicroStrategy. Uh, and there's probably another half dozen other vendors that we're seeing where they are not capitalizing. There is no reprieve for these legacy names and, and we don't anticipate them getting additional spend because of this work from home infrastructure uh, kind of movement. So let's unpack that a little bit. I mean, it's interesting, yeah. semantic and checkpoint and security. You know, mm-hmm. security you'd think would, would, would get an uplift here, but what you're seeing here, and, and you, let me just tell uh, the audience who yeah. you called out, uh, semantic, Teradata, MicroStrategy, NetApp, Checkpoint, Oracle, and IBM, and I know yeah. there are others, but I would say this, these are companies that are getting impacted in a big way by the cloud. I mean, particularly you think semantic and Checkpoint, um, that's you know cloud security companies are actually probably mm-hmm. still doing pretty well. You take mm-hmm. Teradata, Teradata is getting impact by the cloud from folks like Snowflake and and, and Redshift. Right. You know MicroStrategy, a lot of modern BI coming out. NetApp that's here's it. a company that's embraced the cloud, but the vast majority of the business continues to be on-prem. I think that's IBM right. and Oracle are, are, are interesting. They're somewhat different, actually a lot different. IBM has services exposure, and you guys call that out particularly around outsourcing. At mm-hmm. the same time, it's going to be interesting to see, IBM has got a, got, a, got a lot of resources. It's going to be interesting to see if they start coming out with coronavirus related services. Mm-hmm. So we're watching for that. And then Oracle, you know, their whole story is, okay, we got Gen 2 cloud and mission critical in the cloud. 
uh, but mm -hmm. their on-prem business is, I think, clearly going to be affected here. Is kind of what you guys pointed out, and I would agree with that. But your thoughts? Yeah. So I think what we're seeing is organizations they had a cloud roadmap, and that roadmap is continuing. The one thing that is changing in some of that roadmap is we need to be able to support employees as they work from home as we achieve this roadmap, and so that's why we're not seeing a reprieve on the legacy side, but we are seeing. Uh, upticks in spend where we just wouldn't anticipate them, right? On maybe on Citrix, on on Dell laptops, uh, Adobe, and a few other areas. Now, in terms of security side, uh, some of the next gen security vendors like uh, CrowdStrike, Okta, right, which is an MFA, those vendors are doing well, and it, it makes sense, right? You have more people working from home, you have more uh, devices that are connecting to data applications, right? Just uh, a company itself. And so you would expect spend to continue going up as you need more authentication, more endpoint protection. Uh, Cisco Merikai, right? They do cloud networking. That piece is looking very good, even though hardware networking is not looking very good at all. But cloud networking is looking good, which again makes sense as you're increasing bandwidth on that side. Yeah, so definitely uh, stories of two two sides of that coin. That's right. Um, I want to, uh, Andrew, if you want to, if you wouldn't mind bringing up the next chart, we're going to go back to the first one that we showed you with the time series. Mm -hmm. This is a very important uh, point. Again, we, we can't stress it enough. We want to understand the impact of the stimulus or aid package, and, and ETR is going to continue to track that. Uh, what can we expect uh, from you guys over the next week or so? Yeah, the, the goal is to determine whether or not the stimulus is having an impact on how people are responding to our survey as it relates to uh, how they're changing their budgets. And so the next four or five days, uh, if we start seeing an uptick in, 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 in this yellow and blue lines here, I think that's a positive. I think that shows that uh, people are uh, kind of wrapping their heads around, great, the government is taking action here. There, there is a, uh, a roadmap in place to help us get out of, there, out, out of this. Uh, but if the line continues coming down, it just may be that the last few weeks or you know, the last month or so, there was just so much damage. Um, you know, there, there may, there's not really, you know, there's no coming back from this, at least uh, in, in the near term. So we are kind of watching out for that. Yeah, well, the, the Fed is definitely active. I mean, they're doing right. what they can, they're pushing liquidity into the marketplace. You know, people think they're out of bullets. I, I don't agree. The Fed, <laughs> Fed has a, Quite a bit of of, of headroom mm -hmm. and some dry powder to, to go for, which is which is awesome. But the Fed itself, you know, can't do it. Uh, you you needed to have this fiscal stimulus, so we're excited to see that come come to market. Um, I think I, I think what I would say to our audience is, my concern is uncertainty. The markets don't mm -hmm. like uncertainty, and right now there's a lot of uncertainty. If you saw the piece on Medium of the the hammer and the dance. You know, mm -hmm. it, it lays out some scenarios uh, about what could happen to the healthcare system. Yeah. Uh, you see people who say, hey, we should shut down for 10 weeks. The president's mm -hmm. saying, hey, we want to get back to work by, by April. So the big concern that, that I have is, okay, maybe we can stamp it out in the near term and get back to work by, you know, late April, early May, but then what happens? Are people going to start traveling again? Are people going to start holding events again? And I think there's going to be some real question marks around that. So that uncertainty, I think, is something that we obviously have to watch. I think there is light at the end of the tunnel when you look mm -hmm. at you know, China and some of the other things that are happening around the world, but we still don't know how long that tunnel is. Sagar, I'll give you final thoughts before we wrap. Yeah, I think, and that's the biggest thing here is the uncertainty, which is why we're doing a lot of this event analysis, right? We're trying to figure out after each one of these big events, is there more certainty in people's responses? And, and just, you know, when we were talking about, you know, uh, sectors and verticals and vendors that are not doing well, well, because of the uncertainty, we're seeing uh, a lot of downticks in spend amongst outsourced uh, IT and IT consulting vendors. And as long as the uncertainty continues, you're going to see more and more IT projects frozen, less and less spend on those outsourced IT and, and IT consulting vendors and, and others. And uh, until, uh, there's something really in place here where people feel comfortable. Uh, you're going to probably see budgets remain where they are, which right now they're negative. So uh, folks, as we said last week, Sagar and I, ETR is committed, the Cube is committed to keep you updated on a regular basis. Right now we're on a weekly cadence. As we have new information, we will bring it to you. Sagar, thanks so much for, for coming on and supporting this. Yeah, no problem, thanks for having me again. You're welcome. And so uh, thank you for watching uh, this uh, Cube Insights powered by ETR. 
And remember, all these breaking analysis available on podcasts. Go to etr.plus. That's where all the action is in terms of the, the survey work. SiliconAngle.com covers these breaking analysis and I publish weekly on Wikibon.com. Thanks for watching everybody. Stay safe and we'll see you next time. Thank you.